Hello everybody, Grace Still Plays, and we're back with another RimWorld informational video. This one's just going over farming and some of the different crops that you can utilize, especially for food in the game. And what I'd like to show you guys is kind of the pros and cons of each of the food crops, a couple of the drug crops that have recently come out, and then a little bit of hydroponics, because the hydroponics does have a use. I know that some people are very underwhelmed by it, but there are some advantages to doing the hydroponics. We'll go into that in a little bit. Now I'm utilizing a type of map here that is very, very nice. And the reason why I did this is so that I would have each type of soil composition right next to one another. We're gonna have gravel over here. Then we're gonna have regular soil over here. Then we're gonna have rich soil over here. And then we're gonna have the hydroponics over here. We're gonna take a look at each of the growable food crops and kind of how the different soils affect them and then some other things as well. So let's go into the different crops here. Over in the gravel, what you're going to notice, and, and this is kind of the one advantage of the redheaded stepchild of the food crops, which is potatoes. The potatoes, oddly, have a better grow rate than anything else when it comes to bad soil composition. Now, you notice we're in gravel here. Potato plants grow at 88%. Corn plants grow at 70 And then you're going to notice a trend here. Rice at 70 Strawberry at 82 Psychoids at 70 and then smoke leaf at 70 psychoids and smoke leaf being the two new crops that you can plant to create drugs and the like now Each of these different crops has some different attributes to them for instance potatoes and rice must be cooked to be enjoyed if you don't cook them then your colonists will face a mood penalty for eating raw food while corn and strawberries can be eaten raw, which is quite nice. However, there's something to note. Don't ever, and this is if you can, don't ever eat your fruits and vegetables raw in RimWorld. The reason why is because, and we'll go over here real quick, when one of these items are harvested, so now you have an item here and you go to your, you go to your informational area, you can see that the nutrition is 0 0.05. Now recognize it's like this for all of the items. It's always going to be 0 0.05 for a singular piece of potatoes, rice, corn, or berries. But when you cook things and you make a simple meal, and you'll notice we just made a real quick simple meal here, you get 0.85 nutrition. That means that it takes 10 food to make a simple meal, or a fine meal actually in that case. It takes 10 food to make this. It just happens to take 10 of either vegetables or meats to make a simple meal. And you're getting 0.85 nutrition. If you just ate the raw food, you would only be getting 0.5 nutrition. So that is a benefit of 0.35 extra nutrition just for making the same amount of items into a simple meal. Now, the only instance that you would be using a simple meal, or I should say not using a simple meal instead of using the raw products, is if you don't have a way to keep your things cool. If you don't have refrigeration, you don't have a freezer yet. Now, it's very easy to get refrigeration or a freezer in the game fairly easily, except for if you're playing on the tribalist setting or for some reason you're not using electricity. But if you're not doing that, these different crops also have different timelines that they can last for. You can see here, potatoes last for right around uh, basically a one half a year. Remember, 15 days is a season. There's four seasons in a year. So half a year for potatoes, three fourths of a year, just about for rice, an entire year for corn, and then only one month roughly for berries, a little bit less than a month for berries. So that is something to consider when a simple meal only lasts for four days when it's not refrigerated. So remember, if you're making corn that lasts for a year into a simple meal, it's now only going to last for four days or a couple of days. So that is something to consider when you're making your meals. Make sure that you have refrigeration or some sort of freezer. Now we saw these different plants in the gravel, but how about in normal soil? Let's take a look. Potatoes grow at 100, rice at 100, corn at 100, strawberry at 100, psychoids at 100, and smoke leaf at 100. So all things being equal, everything has the exact same benefit growing on normal soil. But watch what happens when we go to fertile soil. The fert, or I should say the rich soil. The rich soil, potato plants grow at 116%, strawberries grow at 124%, Corn grows at 140%, but now watch this. Rice grows at 
Psychoids grow at 140%, and Smoke Leaf grows at 140%. So pretty much these last five crops here, or I should say four crops, the corn, rice, Smoke Leaf, and Psychoids all grow at 140% in the rich soil. So you might want to consider growing rice or corn instead of strawberries or potatoes when you have rich soil because you're going to want to get that much extra benefit for it. But now let's check out the hydroponics. In the hydroponics, you get some significant differences. You're going to have your potatoes growing at 152%. Now recognize everything grows faster in the hydroponics plot. That's the design of the hydroponics. Also, if you wanted a decent design on utilizing the space for your hydroponics, you can use this here. You can fit 24 of these hydroponics in, in, indoors under one single lamp. And if we click on the lamp, you'll actually see that this format keeps everything exactly in the lighted area of the sun lamp. Now recognize you have to use a sun lamp to get the true benefit of the hydroponics. And you also, if you're going to do hydroponics, you want to keep it inside for a couple reasons. One, this way you will always have protection from lightning storms and the like so that your crops won't be set on fire. They'll be protected from raiders who also won't be able to set them on fire without busting through a wall or a door. You can put a heater or a cooler inside to keep the temperature inside here very normal so that the plants can grow well. And then, of course, you'll always have 100% light because you'll be utilizing the sun lamp. Now, plants don't grow all the time. There is a resting time. But for the most part, when they can grow, they will always have 100% light from the sun lamp. Now, let's take a look at some of the grow times in here. Oh, and just an extra little benefit. Put down tile inside of your hydroponics area just to let your colonists walk faster while they're planting all these. Now, inside, we said potatoes grow at 152%. Strawberries grow at 178%. You cannot grow corn in a hydroponics plant area. So recognize that. But the big winner in the hydroponics is the rice. 230% growth for rice because of the fertile sensitivity that rice has when it comes to the growing plots. Very interesting. Heel root grows at 152% as well. Cotton at 152%. Hops at 152%, but now let's take a look at these drug crops. 230 for psychoids and 230 for smoke leaves as well. So your psychoids and your smoke leaves also get a big benefit for being grown inside of a hydroponics area. I guess it makes sense. Now we looked into how long each of these food crops last out in the weather, but if in case you want to are curious about how long the different drug crops last, both smoke leaves and psychoid leaves last for two seasons, so roughly half a year. Anyway, folks, like I said, I just wanted to make a real quick tutorial and just informational video about the three and four, if you're planting not off of the hydroponics area, food crops that you can plant, as well as how they react differently to the different soils in the game. So remember that sometimes these different plants do get impacted differently depending on where you grow them. And especially that plants like rice grow so incredibly quickly inside of the hydroponics, making hydroponics very useful, especially if you can cook this rice always to make sure that you're getting the best benefit out of it and if you have a freezer to keep your meals after you end up cooking them guys i hope you enjoyed this really short little video for rim world until the next time stay foxy and much love